everybody how are you all doing today it's a beautiful day here and it's the perfect day for a q and a first collaboration q and a between Tree and you guys and i'm so looking forward to it i've been wanting to do one of those forever so this is the q and a concerning my japan series because i've been getting a buttload of questions about those videos and i've let them pile up i've answered most of them in the comments but i thought i'd make a video regardless because it's fun and i like it i also asked on twitter if any of you guys had questions i don't really have a big following on twitter so i did get some answers but not that many most of them will be through youtube so let's start with the twitter ones it will be easier Okay, first question from Laura. What was the first thing you wanted to see do in Japan when you booked your flight? So the first thing I wanted to see... So when I booked my flight initially, I didn't know where I was gonna go. Uh, for sure I was gonna arrive in Tokyo and I was gonna be spending some time in Tokyo, but I didn't know that I was gonna go to Hiroshima or... Osaka, I'm already forgetting where I went. I had a few ideas, but it wasn't, it wasn't like Tokyo because I was sure I was gonna go there and uh, The things I was really looking forward to at the time I think was definitely food um, Temples for some reason I really wanted to visit temples and shrines. It just seems so majestic and like I want to say fairy tale like though I don't know if it's appropriate to use that word but Those are the things I think I had in mind. Oh, I also really wanted to go to an onsen I'm I wasn't sure I was going to be able to because of my tattoos. Luckily, I found some onsen that were tattoo friendly. So, um, I'd say those things. I know it's pretty general, but when I booked my flight, I hadn't read any guides yet. So, apart from t really known touristy things like uh, Shibuya Crossing or um, Tokyo Sky Tree or some things like that, I didn't really know what to expect. So yeah, nothing really specific, just an idea of what I wanted to experience over there. Okay, I got a question from Chris asking what was your favorite food? And I know this might be silly because I tried loads of things and everything was delicious, but I... <laughs> the thing I miss the most is actually onigiri and I know that in some vlogs I was like, I'm so tired of eating onigiri every day for breakfast, but... I really miss it now and as much as I love the ramen and the steamed buns and the taikoyaki and everything there is a spot in my heart for onigiri the rice balls probably because I ate so much of it it just became part of my routine even though it was only for three weeks I'd love to have onigiri for breakfast again I have to I'll have to learn to do that okay I'm gonna move on to the YouTube question YouTube questions are okay the cable isn't long enough. Please stay alive. Okay, Janet asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate Japan? 10. <laughs> That's easy. I loved it so much. I don't think I was there long enough to see things that would bother me on a day-to-day -day basis, but as a trip slash experience, 10. I love Japan. And there's a second part to a question that says, if you have three or more words to de describe Japan, what would it be? Uh, well, I still see Japan with stars in my eyes, so I'm gonna go out there and say that it was magical, it was peaceful, which I know is contradictory because uh, certain days I was stuck in the crowds and I think I was going completely crazy, but up in nature, in the mountains or in certain spots it was just so peaceful so magical peaceful and i don't know out of this world new exciting it's just it's from my point of view as like a person who hasn't traveled much and a noob and someone who's been looking forward to this trip for years and years uh yeah alice asks how did i handle my luggage do trains allow luggage and uh, when and where would she reserve her train tickets? I had a big suitcase and I was worried that it wouldn't fit in a Shinkansen. I didn't try putting it overhead because you have overhead space. Um, I think it was too, way too big for that. But there is room right at the back of each uh, Shinkansen carriage. Car, car. Like, small space between the, the last seats and that's where I put my suitcase and when I reserved my seat, yes you can reserve I think you just go to the station there's maybe other ways to reserve your Shinkansen seat but I always went to the station directly to the people at the JR 
thingamabob. And usually they have this little questionnaire like do you want a window seat or things like that. Um, where you, you point to what you want, like smoking, non-smoking. And when they ask if I have a preference for my seats, I usually show my luggage and um, I try like to explain <laughs> to mine with my hands that I'd like to be in the back if that's possible. And usually I've been lucky with that. It wasn't always the seat at the back, but I always managed and I always managed to travel with my suitcase. It wasn't too much of an issue, luckily. Just be careful if you have uh, luggage on wheels because it's happened more than once that the Shinkansen made a turn and I all the suitcases just like flew away across the train and it wasn't only mine but yeah keep an eye on your suitcase if you feel the train moving and you're in that last row put your hand back and hold on to your suitcase it is n vendor who is asking about the i think that is the kurama onsen how tattoo friendly was the place um, they were really tattoo friendly. Since uh, that onsen is a big resort, you have to go like to a little... It was like a little outdoor shed's house where the lady was there and you had to buy your tickets on the machine, give it to her and she'd hand you a towel. And I took the opportunity to show my strawberry and ask if it was okay. Either be like, okay, or say, it is me, demo i desu ka? And usually that's... Fine. She was like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Tattoo friendly. And I recommend it. It was a beautiful onsen. Jan asks if I speak any Japanese. I'm actually taking evening classes and it's going really slowly and it's getting pretty complicated because I'm in my second year now. So I speak a little Japanese, just a little. Yeah. <laughs> Yama asks if I plan on going back to Japan, where would I go? go and also ask if I experienced uh, any earthquakes while in Japan. Answering the earthquake question, no, I did not experience any earthquakes, thank goodness, because yeah, I was alone, so I would not have known how to handle that. I did, however, experience uh, two typhoons and that was not fun, not fun at all. <laughs> to where I would go if I were to go back? Well, that would depend. If I was going back on just a short trip, I would like to spend more time in Tokyo now that I'm more at ease with the crowds and the area and I know what to expect. Um, I'd like to do, I'd like to actually go more into Golden Guy, I'd like to do karaoke, so maybe next time I'll go with some friends, convince people to come with me to Japan. Um, but if I'm doing another like big exploring slash adventure trip, I would love to see Hokkaido, uh, it seems like a really beautiful place. Not that I'm fan, a big fan of the cold, but... I really want to see more of Japan and Hokkaido seems really cool and obviously down south uh, sounds really good I think it's Okinawa I'm sorry if I'm making horrible horrible mistakes but south with the beaches and the tropical islands it seems really beautiful though would they be okay with me coming to the beach with all my tattoos? I don't know so hard to choose I think Hokkaido might be next on my list but there are also so many like um, off the beaten path, uh, little towns that I'd love to see. Nothing comes to mind here, but I watch so many videos about Japan and there are so many amazing places. So hard to choose, but for now, let's just say if I was doing another um, exploring adventure, I would probably go to Hokkaido. Hiro asks, what was the most impressive good thing in your Japan trip? Um, I would say definitely um, one of my days in the mountains, either in Kurama and Kibune because it was just glorious or in Miyajima because the weather was just beautiful. I don't know which one I would pick because both of them were just beautiful. Maybe um, Miyajima a little more because I was, first of all, First of all, because I was lucky there weren't that many people hiking on that day and the weather was beautiful and the sea and the view and the mountains and everything and oh my! <laughs> on the other hand, the weather was still quite nice in Kibune and Kurama. It was just after a typhoon so there was a lot of crap on the floor and leaves and one of the main hiking paths were closed and I was really looking to doing that. It was still great, I loved it. It might even have won over Miyajima if that path would have been open. Um, but the vibe was different. Kurama and Kibune was more like magical 
forest, a um, lot of shrines and nature and peaceful. And Yajima was more like open spaces, beautiful scenery. It's just completely different vibe. So, well, this question made me go off on total tangents, but one of those two, for sure, I would recommend it. If you could only do one thing, oh geez, I don't even know which one I would recommend between the two. Miyajima has more, but it's more touristy. Kibunen Kurama is like hiking destination for sure. One of those two, you decide. <laughs> Yama asks, what is the name of my Instagram page where I put all my photos? I had to answer that one, I'm mean, self-promotion. Um, it's actually on my secondary Instagram page, which is at Lenny Ku, inserted here. And you can also buy prints of those photos on my Society6 page, which is Society6 Ikutri. Yo from Miyajima asked if I ever ended up eating baked oysters at the end. So I was in Miyajima and one of the specialities are oysters. And I've never had an oyster, any kind of oyster, like raw, baked, any type of oyster, I've never had one. So I was considering trying one and then I kind of chickened out and by the time I got back down from my hike, everything was kind of closing down. So no, I did not end up eating an oyster. I still haven't had oyster in my life. <laughs> Dodnet uh, says that I've done so much on this trip and did I feel stressed out rushing around or did I enjoy being busy? Um, a little bit of both, I'd say, because I wanted to do so much at the beginning and if I felt I hadn't done enough on that day, or something was closed and I lost time and transportation or getting lost. I felt really frustrated because I was like, this is a one trip. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back. I need to squeeze in as much as I can. But after a while, I managed to relax. I really wanted to take my time and see things. And as time went on, I knew not to like overbook my day as I used to do like in the beginning. I was like, the full day, I'd go there, and I was looking at my map and being like, I'm gonna start there, and I'm gonna go there, 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 and then go back there. I... Yeah, yeah, I was like, in Tokyo especially, there was so much to do, and I kind of stressed myself out a little at the beginning, which is fine, I learned from it. And towards the end in Osaka and Kyoto, I was like, I'm gonna focus on this little area, and if I don't get everything done, it'll be fine, and I was much more. I was much more chilled. So I enjoyed having things to see all day, every day. Um, but yeah, I did manage to stress myself out on my own holiday at the beginning. I already said asks if I got to go to Nakano Broadway while in Tokyo. Yes, that is one thing I missed. And actually, no, I did not get to see it. But that was one of the things I really wanted to do while in Tokyo. And I ran out of time. So that is something I will want to see when I'm back in Japan, Tokyo. Hey, I got a comment on how to make onigiri. A lot of people sharing their experiences on my in my comments, which I really love. Um, so if you guys are looking for more after you've done watching my videos, go to the comment section. It's a gold mine of ideas and recommendations and stories and yeah, it's a gold mine. Go check it out. Natalie Rose asks uh, how much my trip costs. I made a video on that subject. I don't even remember which amount I put on there, but there's a video about budgeting your trip to Japan. So go check that video out. I I think I did a pretty good job at summing things up, hopefully. Ready, set, again. Here's a question. Where in Osaka was your Airbnb? The Kobe Airbnb was really shady. Three front doors and then the fridge was shared with a drunk neighbor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, my Airbnb, Airbnb, my Airbnb in Osaka was um, south of Namba. Um, it was actually near... Was it Imamiya? I think I'm getting all these um, station names. Shinimamiya? Because I remember that Dobutsu and Mae uh, was a station I was supposed to avoid because it wasn't supposed to be a good area. But this, but I was like one stop before that. If that helps. If you look at it, it's on the JR loop line. I remember this one time I missed my stop on the JR loop line and I ended up in Dobutsu and Mae where I had to get out and 
go like the opposite direction and in my head I thought it was gonna be like this horrible rundown place and it's gonna was gonna be like this scene from I am legend with like zombies sleeping in corners and it was just none of that it was fine it was actually clean people got off um, it was a little there was a little homelessness but not like oh my god <laughs> Carlin asked, what camera am I using? I actually have a frequently asked question page. I'll insert it in the description below where you have all my gear, my equipment, um, responses to frequently asked questions, basically. But I am using a Canon G7X, not the Mark II, like the old version, and it's still alive for now. Fingers crossed, touch wood. I don't think I have wood close by. Wood because this thing costs a lot of money and they tend to be quite fragile but it works fine for vlogging for sure yeah. um, I got a few questions in my inbox I don't really read my inbox on any social media so guys you, if you have a question you need to tweet at me that is the best way but I am opening my inbox exceptionally because there are a few interesting questions um, recommendations, I've already given mine. I would recommend uh, hiking in Miyajima or uh, Kurama Kibune. Yeah, that, I think that would be my main recommendation. Uh, what disappointed me? Um, the weather. <laughs> the weather was a disappointment for me in Tokyo. It definitely made things harder because I was outdoors all day. So the weather was disappointing. Also the fact that a lot of... Um, temples seem to be under construction during the month of October for some reason maybe because it's down season and from November with the red momiji leaves maybe a lot of tourists were going to be coming in and they, they wanted to get it in before that time that would be my guess but there were a lot of things that I wanted to see which were closed and or just had like yeah, scaffolding and were under construction so that might have been a little disappointing there weren't like huge disappointments. Maybe some areas in Kyoto were like not really worth it because of the crowds mainly. I got a bunch more questions about budget. Again, I will send you over to my video where I talk all about budget and my tips and tricks to travel solo in Japan without much moolah. I don't know why I did that. Why is my money coming from my bra? Okay guys, that's it. I hope I answered most of your questions. Like I said, this is the first Q&A, so the questions are here and there. They're not like overflowing, but I'm sure it will come because I love having a conversation with you guys. So if you have any more questions either about Japan or about Belgium, Brussels, about me, about Pachi, the cat, anything at all about my art um let me know ask you tree on twitter hope you're doing well guys have a beautiful day and uh don't forget to check out my links below if you need more information about anything i'll put everything down there socials everything yeah i outward you all and i'll see you very soon in another video bye